Hello everyone, Mauro here. In this lesson, I'm going to explain the clean installation process of Windows from USB. A clean installation only means wiping out the hard drive and installing a fresh copy of Windows without custom settings, drivers, apps, or files that may interfere with the upgrade progress. Microsoft offers different ways to perform a clean installation of Windows 10, but in my experience, the best option is to use a USB flash drive to set up the installation on an SSD or a traditional hard drive. As I said, this process will delete everything on the computer's hard drive. If you have anything important, I recommend to create a full backup of the current setup before proceeding. Okay, let's dive into the steps to perform a clean installation of Windows 10. But before, please subscribe to the channel and click the like button to help YouTube show this video to more people. It doesn't cost anything and you will be helping the channel and supporting my work. First, let's look at the steps to create a USB flash drive with the installation files. And to do that, open Star and open your preferred web browser. And then go to this website. Now scroll down and where it says create Windows installation media, click the download button and save that file to your computer. Now we're going to open the folder where you downloaded the file. And then we're going to right click on it and select the run as administrator option. Now, at this time, you will need to connect a USB flash drive of at least 8 gigabytes of storage. And because this process will delete anything on that storage, make sure that if you have anything important, you back it up before proceeding. Once you connected the USB flash drive to the computer, click the Accept button. And then you need to choose the Create Installation Media option and then click the Next button. Now, the media creation tool is going to use the settings from your computer for language, edition, and architecture. Most of the time, these are the correct settings, but if you have to change them, make sure to clear this option and select your language. Edition, there's only one edition because you can choose to install Home or Pro from the installation process. And for architecture, most of the time, it's going to be the 64-bit version. If you happen to have older hardware, you can select 32-bit, or you can create an installation media with both architectures. For this video, I'm just going to use the 64-bit option. And then click the Next button. Now we're going to select to create a USB flash drive and click the Next button. Here, make sure to select the correct removal drive. In my case, that's the E drive. If you don't see it on the list, you can click the refresh drive list option and then click the next button. Now the media creation tool is going to proceed to download the installation files and it's going to create the bootable media. This process will also create a USB flash drive that is going to work on the legacy BIOS or if you have a device using a UEFI firmware. After the media creation tool completed creating the bootable media, just click the finish button. After creating the bootable media, you're going to have to connect that USB to the computer that you want to install Windows 10. And then you're going to need to turn off that computer if it is not already off. Then with the USB flash drive, you're going to have to turn the computer back on. As soon as the computer starts, you're going to have to press one of the F keys, such as F1, F2, the one at the top road. You may also have to use the function key and then one of the F keys to access either the BIOS or the boot menu. You may also have to press the escape key or the lead key. Most devices have different settings, so you might want to check your manufacturer support website for more specific details. And one way you can do that is just by checking the model number for your computer and then just type a query like this on your preferred search engine. And then usually on the first link, you can find the answer. For example, I have this laptop and I just type boot menu and HP and the model number. And when I open this link, that takes me to this particular page. And then I just went to the user guide, which I have it open right here. And for example, in this particular computer, I have to press the F10 as soon as the computer starts to access the BIOS. And if I use the escape key, it will open the boot menu and that boot menu will include the option to start from the USB flash drive without having to make any changes to the BIOS. However, you have to check your manufacturer support website because these settings are usually different per device and 
per manufacturer. Okay, so this is the first screen of the Windows 10 setup. Usually the settings on this page are the correct ones. However, if you need to make any changes, this is the time. And then click the next button. And now click the install now button. Now on this page, we're going to click the I don't have a portal key option to continue. Now, if you had an installation of Windows 10 or 11 already on the computer, then this installation is going to activate automatically once it connects to the internet. Now, if this is the first time that you're installing Windows 10, then you will need to provide a product key. You can do that after the installation or right here. To continue, click the I don't have a product key option. Now here, select the edition of Windows that the product key activates. Now, if you have a product key for Windows 10 Pro, you're gonna have to choose the Pro edition and then click next. Check this option and click the next button. Now, because we're going to be doing a fresh installation of Windows, we're going to use the custom install Windows only advanced option. On this page, we need to specify on which drive we want to install Windows 10. However, if your computer have a, an installation of Windows, it might look like this. And on this case, I have multiple drives. So I'm going to delete all the partitions and select the correct drive. However, you only need to delete the partitions for the drive that you want to install Windows 10. If you have other partitions with data and you don't want to install the operating system in that drive, you don't need to erase those partitions. So and to delete a partition, just select the partition and click the delete option and confirm and then proceed with the same steps for the remaining partitions. So this is a computer that I use for testing. So I do have multiple hard drives. However, I'm going to install Windows on this drive. And to do that, I just need to select it. And then we need to click the next button. Do the installation process. The system is going to create the necessary partitions and proceed with the clean installation of Windows 10. Then just click next to continue. So here we are in the initial setup of Windows 10, also known as the Autobox experience. On the first page, you need to select your region and then click the Yes button. Now you need to select your keyboard layout and then click the Yes button. And on this page, you can add a second keyboard layout. However, you can do that later. So we can click the Skip button. Now this computer is actually connected to the network using an Ethernet cable. So I didn't need to authenticate to a wireless connection, but if you do, you're also going to see a page where you can select the wireless network and you will need the Wi-Fi password in order to connect the device. Now on this page, we need to choose the setup for personal use option. However, this page is only available if you're setting up a Windows 10 Pro installation. On a Windows 10 Home installation, you're not going to have this page. Now click next. Now on the account page, that's where we're going to create a Windows 11 account. By default, we have to create one using a Microsoft account. However, if you want to use a local account that is not connected to the internet, you can click the offline account option. That will take you to another screen where you can proceed setting up a local account. Most users are going to be using a Microsoft account. So in here, you just need to type your Microsoft account email and then just click the next button. I have connected my Microsoft account with the Microsoft Authenticator app on my phone. So I'm going to proceed to confirm the authentication. Now on this page, we're going to create a pin to access your account. You can always use your password after you create a pin. However, this method is more secure and it's only significant to the computer. So if someone was able to get your pin, they won't be able to access your Microsoft account. And if you ever forget your pin, you can always access your account user using your password. So here, click the create pin button. And in here, we're just going to create a pin. Now, if you want to make the pin more like a password, you can click this option and that allows you to use letters and symbols in addition to numbers. On this page, Microsoft is trying to promote their Microsoft Edge browser, but you can skip this option by clicking the No Now button. On this page, you can choose your privacy settings. 
by default, all the settings available are turned on. However, you can always turn them off. And as you turn them off, you can see what's going to happen when you don't have it turned on. Make sure to go through all the settings and choose the options that are best suited for you. Once you're ready, just click the accept button. On this page, Microsoft is trying to know how are you going to be using your computer in order to personalize tips, advertisements, and recommendations while you're using the Windows experience. However, you can always skip this option. You can always connect your Android phone to your computer. So if you have an iPhone or you don't want to use this feature, just click the No Thanks button. On this page, again, Microsoft is trying to promote its services, but you can skip this by clicking the No Thanks button. Cortana is being discontinued, so you don't need to enable this feature. And to do that, just click the No No button. So we're now on the Windows 10 desktop. Now, the first action that you want to take after the setup is to check for updates. And not only this process is going to download any available updates, but also it will help to download any missing or outdated drivers that might be needed on your computer. And to do that, just open start and look for settings. And then we're going to go to updating security. And then we're going to click on update and security, and then click the check for updates button. Now all the available updates are going to download and install on your computer. Any missing drivers that might be available through Windows Update, they will also download through this process. However, it is also a good idea to click on view all optional updates and on the driver updates section, check any of the available drivers and click the download and install button to add the drivers to the download list. You also notice that we have here a cumulative update, but this is a preview. If you want to install that as well, just make sure to check that and click this button. However, previews of updates may sometimes cause issues. So for that reason, I will recommend just to skip it and let the system download updates whenever they're officially available. Now, it is a good idea to wait until all the updates download and install on the computer. And then after all the updates read pending to restart, then click the restart button. After the system is up to date, you want to check if there are any missing drivers on the computer. And you can do that through device manager. First, open start and look for device manager and click the top result to open the app. As you can see, because everything is neat and there's nothing standing out, we can tell right away that we're not missing any drivers or ev and everything is working correctly. However, if there was anything missing, it will stand out with a yellow icon, as you can see right here. It might also be labeled as unknown. In that case, you will need to research, download, and install the needed drivers manually. And one way you can do this is going to the website for your manufacturer. So for my HP laptop, I will look for the brand and the model number. And then I will just type download drivers. Now, just be careful the page that you go to. Usually you want to go to the official page. You can use Bing, Google, or any search engine that you like. And that will most of the time bring you to the same page. Now, every manufacturer is going to have a different layout and different options to download drivers. And for this example, I'm just going to select the OS, the version. And then as you can see, we have all the drivers available. So you just need to identify the ones you need, and then you just download the file. And then you just need to right click and select the run as, the run as administrator option. And then you will need to go through the installation process but this might be different for other brands, but at least you have an idea on how to go through this process. Sometimes 
Manufacturers also include a piece of software that you can install on the computer that will scan and download any missing drivers. If that's available, you can go through that route to make sure that all the drivers on your computer are installed correctly. Now, if the problem is with a network adapter, then you won't be able to connect to the internet. If this is the case, you will need to use another computer and then you will need to visit your manufacturer support website on the driver section to download the required driver onto a USB. And then you can connect that USB to the computer and then just proceed with the installation process. And after all the system updates and drivers are installed on the computer, you can proceed to install all your applications and restore any data from backup or connect to cloud services like OneDrive or other ones to access your files. And that's a complete tutorial on how to do a clean installation of Windows 11 on your computer. Remember to like the video, leave your comments, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done that yet. And I just hope this video was informative for you. And I would like to thank you for viewing.